Hello, I'm Adrián de la Rocha and I'm going to talk about my work on the prediction of interatomic forces in BCC solids using a molecular graph kernel. Our group is working on developing a machine learning pipeline for BCC simulations that takes the results from a village of molecular dynamics and uses machine learning to ultimately make the phonon curves more accessible for these systems without the computational unfeasibility that quantum mechanical simulations require. For this, we are using the molecular graph kernel developed by Yu Tang in 2019, as cited on the references. Our data sets are calculated through our initial molecular dynamics, be it in quantum espresso for the case of our iron data set or VASP in zirconium. And lastly, I think it is important to mention our previous work with HEALTH, which is a method that we developed that takes forces and positions and gives force constants that can be fed, can be fed to Phonopy to calculate the phonon curves. First, I have an example of the BCC lattice, pretty simple. Then I have a comparison between the energy calculated when slightly displacing a single atom in a single direction from the ideal lattice positions of the iron data set and its counterpart in the ground truth. The displacement is made uh, in steps of 0.1 from 0 to 0.9. And as we can see for the moment, the prediction doesn't look very accurate, but uh, that is something that we're looking on to fixing. Uh, later, I show some more promising results. In the direct comparisons of the predictions of the energies where it looks better fitted, it's a one-to-one -one comparison, so the x-axis should equal the y-axis. Again, comparing the ground truth given by the molecular dynamics and the one predicted by the model. As mentioned, uh, our data sets from molecular dynamics are BCC iron, from Quantum Espresso, which is a zirconium from VASP, and also we used for reference um, non molecular dynamics, molybdenum and lithium, which I don't show here, but we have worked with it. Then we do Gaussian process regressor to feed the molecular graph kernel and get the energies from the graphs. Then Using finite difference and displacing one atom at a time, we get the partial derivative of the potential, which equals the negative of the force, which is ultimately what we're looking for here. When in the ideal positions, we truly only need to displace one atom in one of the orthogonal directions because of the high symmetry of the system and the periodic boundary conditions, which make it so that the result should be equivalent for any atom in any direction. To know how far to displace it, we have looked at the distributions of displacement for equilibrium in any of the orthogonal directions of each of the simulations, which are shown in figure five and six. Then I have here how I would calculate the force acting upon atom I in the direction of A, where U would be the potential, again, as given by the train GPR model, and S is one of the points of the atom at which we are making the test. So mean is the minimum um, value for its position in that uh, dimension and max is its maximum position again in that direction now then we're moving it in small steps which is the part of the finite difference which should be way smaller than the difference of how much it's moving in total when looking at a short range we can see that the force is linear here in figure seven and eight blue represents the results and orange is a fit a linear fit then we show uh, each line of the forces in this next two plot for a random step in iron and in zirconium, where again the atom is displaced from equilibrium each in, in each of the positions, but in this case we do repeat the process for every atom in any direction. And we also show a comparison of the standard deviation of the calculation compared to the potential energy as given by the GPR model. Once these results are good enough, we will fit the forces and the positions to our previously developed health method, which will complete our machine learning pipeline.